it this? Is it this way? Oh. Hello? No, I don't want, no, no more. All right, I'm gonna go. It's Buddy G, trying to sell me more peanut dust. I'm just getting a drink. What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer, and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video, I'm checking out the Axoon Simo, which lets you use your iPhone as a camera monitor. Wait, what? I'm gonna get into what this is, how it works, its features, its build quality, the image you get from it, and lots of juicy pros and cons. Let's do it. So this is a cool product, and I'm not gonna keep it. I'm actually gonna give it away to one of my Patreon backers. The idea with my Patreon is it's non-profit, any funds, I buy gear, uh, I review it, and then give it away to my backers. So if you find my videos helpful, if you like gear giveaways, if you want to enter to win this, do check it out, it's all linked below. It's inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee. Now, what is this? The CMO is a solution to something that filmmakers have been saying for years, which is, my iPhone has an awesome screen and it's very connectable thing, so why can't I use it as a monitor for my camera? Why doesn't this technology exist? Well, now it does. Let's get into how it works and its features. So the headline feature of being able to use your iPhone as a camera monitor is achieved by taking the HDMI out of your camera and then into the CMO. The CMO does the, it is the brain, it does the processing and then out into your iPhone. It's worth noting that you'll need an iPhone 8 or later to be able to use the CMO. And for use with iPads, definitely check their website because there's a whole mess of which ones are compatible and not. The CMO will accept signals up to HD 60p. And you might be thinking, well, why not 4K? Well, even the latest iPhones at the time of filming, that would be the iPhone 14, have only 2.8K resolution. So HD, I think is completely fine. And this is not a mistake opportunity. The CMO also lets you record footage directly to your iPhone and that's a really cool thing, albeit at a lower bit depth and resolution. It's good for things like backups, that kind of thing, but I know what a lot of you are thinking. Proxies, right? Well unfortunately it's not recommended because iPhones record footage video at variable frame rates and so it's not going to match your full quality footage, so unfortunately not recommended. You get lots of exposure and focus tools, and in fact, I can't think of a single one it's missing when compared to dedicated camera monitors. There's too many to list, but the ones that I use most often are waveforms, which I just leave on and tuck in the bottom right-hand corner, a conversion LUT to decode my low contrast log footage, and don't worry, almost every camera brand is covered, peaking and focus assist if I'm ever using manual focus. The CMO also unlocks streaming capability to a number of platforms. Now, I'm not a streamer. I personally don't think that my content is very compatible to that world, so I'm not really the best person to comment on this. I have heard that you need to significantly lower the video quality to get smooth and, you know, a reliable stream. So this is possible. I'm not the best one to comment about it, so someone else can do that. So. Let's now see what we get in the box. So looking in the small box that you get, there's instructions, which I didn't read, an Allen key, a nice little gizmo for attaching it to your camera, two different kinds of cable. One of course is for your iPhone. The other one is for connecting it to iPads and then the unit itself. And I was immediately struck by how light it is. And that's basically it. The image using the CMO is kind of no surprise, very good. After all, you are using your iPhone screen and they tend to be very bright and with lots of contrast. Right here, I'm using my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which has 825 nits. I found the color accuracy to be really good, but of course this is gonna vary on the phone model you use. In terms of build quality, the CMO is a little bit plasticky, which generally I don't love, but in this case, it kind of makes sense because it's so damn light. In fact, the bulk of the weight is gonna be from your phone and the battery that you add. Luckily, it has metal where it counts, which is on the mount, and it really feels sturdy once it's mounted. I'd also say the color, I don't mind it myself, but I suspect many filmmakers will prefer a matte black or something like that, just so it's more kind of low profile. 
One other handy thing that I noticed is it has a cold shoe on the top so you can mount further accessories, microphones or whatever you like. Handy. Moving on now to user experience and user interface and the first time that I plugged my phone into the SEMO, it prompted me to download the app, which was just a really slick, e easy experience. Once I had the app downloaded, I was shooting video within seconds with no configuration needed whatsoever other than to add my conversion lookup table. It goes without saying that operation is with a touch screen, you know, you're using it on an iPhone. And having owned monitors in the past which have touch operation, this is by far the most responsive and snappy that I've ever used. So really, I don't have any niggles when it comes to the user interface. It's really pretty great. However, when it comes to the user experience of the device in general, I have one main one, which is that it takes your phone out of play. And before you say, you shouldn't be on your phone while shooting, obviously I agree with you, but you also know it's not quite that simple. Personally, my preference is to have my phone as a separate thing because it can be useful in between shooting for things like checking a shot list, contacting people, navigation, paying for things. It, it adds up. I mean, you saw the silly intro sequence at the beginning. Next onto value and judging the value of this thing is not that simple because on its own, you might look at it and go, holy moly, that's cheap. But then of course you have to add the cost of a phone on and then all of a sudden the, the total cost skyrockets. But then again, you already have a phone, so who cares, right? And we've come full circle. Personally, I would say this is a good value product. For something that's new to filmmakers and that will be game-changing for a lot of people, I think this is a good value product. However, there are dedicated five-inch monitors out there that cost less than the SEMO alone. The one that springs to mind in particular is the OC T5 Plus, which I reviewed recently. It's bright, it's got a really good looking sharp image, it's got all of the same focus and exposure tools. It's so inexpensive and on top of that, it leaves your phone free to be a phone. Anyway, now let's go through the pros and cons and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros and the SEMO is a seriously innovative idea that will be game changing for many people. The image looks really great on a phone and can also be paired with larger iPads and iPad minis. It has a really good user interface. I honestly can't think of how I would improve it. You get loads of exposure and focus tools, honestly as many as any other monitor I've ever used. Obviously you get touchscreen operations because, you know, you're using it on a phone. And that's more than I can say for a lot of other monitors for around the same price as a SEMO. It's convenient. Keep the SEMO in your bag and you'll always have a nice monitor to use. And onto the cons, and using the SEMO leaves you without the use of your iPhone. If you're fine with that, then ignore this. But I like the use of my phone. Using the SEMO obviously uses up phone battery and doesn't charge your phone. The fact that it doesn't is kind of a missed opportunity. I know what you're gonna say, there are a few hacks for this, but I don't like hacking products, I like them to be finished. Higher resolution and bit depth recording to your iPhone directly would have been incredible. I know it's difficult, but man, think of the possibilities. The build is okay. It's not sort of first rate, it's okay. Finally, to my opinion and Whilst it's not that easy to make comparisons because this is a fairly unique product, I already did and that's to the OCT5 Plus and I kind of feel like I really like what the SEMO is doing but the OCT5 I think is my preference just because of all the reasons I already mentioned. However, I also think this is a no-brainer purchase for filmmakers anyway. It's just something that you can throw in your bag, leave it there, you know, you can go traveling around with it and you'll always have a good monitor in your bag. Otherwise, I feel like I summed it up pretty well in my pros and cons. That is how I feel about it. So anyway, I just hope you found this video helpful and interesting. My question of the day for you is this. What innovation would you like to see in camera monitors going forward from camera monitor producers? Let me know in the comments section below. It's gonna be interesting. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio and videography on this channel, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.